Hey, what's up, everybody? This is EasySpeedsAndFeeds.com. Today, we'll be showing how to mill some 304 stainless. So, let's get started. Okay, so here's a part rectangular looking piece from MassCam 2020. So what we want to do is we're going to show a, a couple of different types of uh, milling, but first we want to set up our part and set up our planes. So you're going to measure the side. It's measuring out at one inch. So we're going to transform this down about one inch. Go to translate minus Z minus one inch. Hit the check mark. Clear colors. There we go. Now it's at Z0. Top face is at Z0. So, next, we're going to create another level. We're going to call it wireframe. Make that level two. So we're going to grab our solid and we're going to turn it into wireframe. And we're going to do that so we can select our wireframe and make some contour moves. So we'll select it, go to the wireframe tab, click on curve all edges. This will take your solid and create wireframe. There we go. Now we'll go over to the right side and click on select all wireframe entities, right click, and we're gonna add, we're gonna put it on level two. Click change level. Deselect use active level. Whoops, we'll try that again. Select all wireframe entities, change level. We'll type in two. That should pop in wireframe. There we go. We're just going to move it to the second level. Okay. So sweet. So now we have a wireframe level and a solid level. Now you can program off the solid or the wireframe. That's why I like using both because it gives you options. This part's pretty simple, so we can just use a wireframe for all the, the contours. So, next we want to move our XYZ, or coordinate system, to the center of the part. We'll draw some wireframe to indicate the center, give it a point. Click on, we'll go to the planes tab, click on the top. And we will duplicate it. After that, we want to edit a work coordinate system so we can move it. We'll click on edit, select that ball, and then select that point right in the middle. Now you can put your work coordinate system anywhere. It's just I like putting it in the middle because I'll probe off each side of the part. Seems to be the most accurate way for me. So it looks like we drew our wireframe one inch too far down. So we have to fix that. We'll select all that wireframe. Go to transform, translate, bring it up one inch. 
There we go. If we moved our work cordon system down there, that would set our Z0 one inch too far down. And that would screw things up because we just want to touch off the top of the part. So, now that that's all fixed, move our work cordon system there it's on top of the part right in the middle right where we want it again you can put it wherever you want that's just where I like to put it there we go we got our work coordinate system we got our wireframe soon we'll be able to add some tool paths but first we're gonna add some stock There's lots of ways to add stock, but this is a little trick I like to use when I'm doing any type of dynamic milling, which I'll also show you. I'll show you contouring and dynamic milling. So if I know my stock, I can just type it in 4.5 by 2.5, hit the check mark. Again, the wireframe is one inch down too low. It's minus one inch in Z, so we're just going to bring that up. And we're going to transform, translate, positive one. Hit the check mark. There we go. So. That stock will come in handy when we are doing our dynamic milling, which I'll show you guys. So we got our part, we got our work coordinate system, we have our stock. Now, finally, we can add some toolpaths. So, the first one I'm going to show you is contour, which is pretty simple. And we'll show you dynamic after. So contour is a very simple way to do it. You want a climb cut, which is that direction. With contour, you can just use your wireframe and select all your lines. You can either use, use the lines one inch down or the lines at Z0. Either one works. There you go. <clears throat> so that's looking good. Our parameters pop up and it looks like it already gave us a half inch flat end mill so we'll make that tool two. Pretty simple. Actually tool one. Now we'll go to easyspeedsandfeeds.com, find 304 stainless steel, type in some info, 225 surface feet, half inch diameter, five teeth, and keep in mind this is kind of a starting point for 304 stainless steel. You can either go faster or slower depending on your tool manufacturer's recommendations. So always always look that up. Always go on your tool manufacturer's website and poke around in there and look for some speeds and feeds. So we'll type in 1719 RPM, feed rate of 10, retract, rapid. Now our linking parameters, control the depth of the tool. Click on absolute on all these. Depth of one inch, cut parameters, multi passes. Tool, minus one inch. It's looking good. Okay, so here is the simplest way to mill. Three or four stainless steel. It's just one simple contour. Just gonna go around the part. Now 
Now that's taking a huge cut, which really isn't the greatest thing, but you guys get the idea that's the simplest way to do it. Okay, we can go back into parameters and we can add multi passes to take smaller cuts. Three multi passes, 100 thou each, one finish cut, a five thou. So, these cuts aren't as big now. Still not the, the greatest toolpath, but it's simple and easy. We're going to set up our stock here so we can go into verify and get a better look at what our tool's doing. We'll try a bounding box. Give that a go. on verify this opens up another window for you to view what you what you've been doing so in verify it looks like our stock did not generate correctly looks like master cam had a little glitch there we'll go back and fix that later Keep in mind there's many ways to create uh, a stock. So there's lots of ways. There's bounding boxes, there's using solids, there's uploading files, all types of ways. So don't be surprised if you have to play around with it for a little bit. So next, I want to show you guys the way I like my preferred way. So you can contour it. 304 stainless steel or you can use dynamic milling which is much easier on the tool so you click on dynamic milling you click on that outer stock we drew then you click on your parts wireframe and feel free to pause the video if I'm going too quick and rewatch it we are going over a lot here There we go. So we clicked on machining regions and avoidance regions. Speeds and feeds, we'll use the same. The starting point from easy speeds and feeds. Linking parameters, go minus one inch after we set these to absolute. Cutting parameters, stock to leave on wall, we'll set at zero. Stock to leave on floors will also set at zero. Step over, we'll lighten that up a bit. Eighth of an inch, we'll, we'll change it to 25 thou, okay. So, that all looks good. So, our toolpad did not generate correctly, so we have to fix that problem. It's actually in our geometry. We need to go from outside. We're trying to stay inside between those two pieces of wireframe. We want to come from the outside. So there we go. We regenerated it. Now we're going to back plot it. See what's going on. It's taking 25,000 cuts, one inch deep. There it goes. See, contour, just contouring can really plunge the end mill 
into areas you don't want it plunging into, especially with a hard material like 304 stainless, it will eat, eat up your end mill. But when you do high speed dynamic milling, it does not overload your end mill whatsoever. So that is my preferred way of doing things is dynamic milling. So we're back into stock. We're going to try to fix it so we can go into verify and see exactly what's going on. And depending on your part, when you set up your stock, it's going to be a little bit different every time. Sometimes you have to play around with it if you have a really funky looking part with work coordinate systems all over the place and multiple ops. So there we go. Go to verify. And our stock is one inch too low. Go back into stock, change that Z to zero, go back into verify. There we go, it looks like we got something going. Sweet. So we'll kick, click uh, play, and there's our dynamic mill. We're going to slow it down. There it is, taking 25 thou cut. Our tool holder is in the way, so we will make that invisible. There you go, there's a better look. See, those are nice light cuts versus contouring, which are very heavy cuts that will most likely destroy your end mill in the process of making the part. Dynamic milling will keep it from becoming chipped, worn down. There you go. Now we'll go over to back plot. Looks like we're at 12 minutes. We'll go to contour, go into verify, and now we're going to watch this. We'll slow it down, restart it, but you guys get the picture. It's just jamming into the material. I mean, that will be pretty hard on your end mill. A lot of people say, well, that looks a lot faster. But if you have to change the end mill every part, it's not that much faster. Plus, the end mills aren't cheap. So, same result. Same result with a part, but you know, using dynamic will keep you from destroying your end mills on hard materials. So there you go. There's our little uh, video on how to machine three or four stainless steel. I hope you guys like it. Um, be on the lookout for more videos, and uh, we'll see you later. Thanks.